You going to shave, Pa? Maybe Saturday, if we go into town. What are we going to use for money? That feller in town said he'd have some for that 40 head of cattle by Saturday. Better get breakfast started, son. Here comes your brother. Jack, I thought I told you to bury that hide. I thought I'd eat first, Pa. Then get it out of sight. It's a Ponderosa brand. When a man steals beef from his neighbor, he usually tries to bury the hide. Didn't you have time? Well, now then, you, you wouldn't mind if we waited until we had our breakfast, would you? Mr. Cartwright? No, not at all. You wouldn't even have to bury the hide if you told me you needed beef. A big man like Ben Cartwright, we didn't figure you'd want to be bothered to us Tatums. Any man needs eating beef from the Ponderosa, all he has to do is ask for it. Well, since you got several thousand head, that's right generous. But if he doesn't ask for it first, he steal it. You calling me a thief? You've already taken land, Josh. This ranch house of yours is more than a quarter of a mile inside the Ponderosa lines. I never said a thing about that. You ain't figuring to throw us off our place, are you, Cartwright? Gus! Right here, Paul. I got him right in my sights. You just say the word, Paul, and I'll pull this here trigger. Drop the gun belt, Ben. Now just get off the horse. Jack, move this critter out the way. Now, Ben, you've been pushing people around so much. Maybe you forgot how it feels to get pushed a bit yourself. Pushing people around. I ride in here, I find that hide there with the Ponderosa brand on it. One of your kids got me in his rifle sights. Who's pushing who, Josh? Now you tell me our place is a quarter mile inside the Ponderosa. Well, isn't it? You got money, you got the law. You can probably prove it and push us off any time you like. Josh, I could have done it a long time before this. Yeah, and now for one lousy steer, you're going to try it, I think. Oh, Josh. I got something for you to remember, Cartwright. We don't push easy. Oh. Oh. He don't look so big now. Boss, you'll cut him down to size. Uh, what do you kids know about it? Well, you whooped him, didn't you, Paul? Yeah, I guess so. 
But it wasn't no waltz like you young pups seem to think. For daylight. No, I wish you wouldn't do that. Oh, he's fretting over those rustlers. I heard him down here pacing the floor last night like a caged up cougar. Well, what do you think he's gonna do? Ride out and corral them all by himself? Well, he'd give it a try. That's a big trouble with Paul. He still thinks he's 21 years old. He ought to start taking it a mite easier. You tell him, huh? Well, somebody ought to. Oh, don't look at me. throw you? No. Did you bump into a limb or something, Paul? No. You uh, forget to duck. What happened? Got into a little scuffle. Into a little scuffle? Who with, Paul? Oh, forget it. Forget it? Why? Because if I told you who it was, you'd all run out of here hot-headed and itchy and looking for trouble, and you'd find the trouble. There'd be some gun play, and somebody get hurt. Better change my shirt. I wonder who it was. Oh. A man Paul's age ought not to go around getting into fights. Age has nothing to do with it. I never knew a man yet who didn't think he was as good as the best day he ever saw. Yeah, remember the time Sam Lucas tried to beat the heck out of you? Yeah. That old man must have been 70 or 75 years old and weigh 100 pounds. Huh. Ran you out of town. Hmm, I had to run. He was going to bust my head into that pickaxe handle. You know, maybe we could try to talk Paul into taking it a little easy or something, huh? Yeah, sure. We're gonna set him in an easy chair, give him his pipe and slippers. Mm -mm, not me. Well, nothing like that, but uh, I might suggest that he cut down a little on the physical side of things. Do a little more supervising, huh? Just supervising? Paul? Well, why not? Other ranches have supervisors. Yeah. What I can you do with that? Maybe we can talk Paul into it. Yeah, maybe we can try. Yeah, it won't be easy. Let's eat now and think about it later. If you boys are still trying to figure out who I had the fight with, forget it. Oh, no, sir. We, we just want you to, to avoid them scraps. Fine. I'll avoid them. Now, let's get to business. As far as I can figure things, we've lost about 200 head of cattle in the last three weeks. If it keeps up this way, we'll be out of beef. So, we're going to do something about it. Now, each one of you boys flips a coin. <laughs> Two of you go with me. The odd man stays home. 
Well? Paul, it's a pretty hard ride up there in that, that country. And it gets colder than a polar bear's nose. Yeah, and there's no telling what kind of trouble we're going to run into, Pa. Well, if you boys don't want to come along with me, I can always take Hop Singh. No, Paul, that, that ain't it. It's... Well, the fact is we think we all ought to go. All of us? Well, someone has to stay home. Why don't you stay? I never have. Yeah, we, we know you ain't never, Paul, and well, that's our point. Yes, see, we, we were thinking maybe you ought to start take, taking a little easy. I like supervising, huh? You, uh, you boys think I might be getting too old for this sort of thing? No, we didn't say that. What did you say? What did we say, Adam? You know what we said. Yeah. Well, Hoss? Well, Paul, we... Doggone it, we... We think you ought to start taking it a little easier, Paul. A man gets a certain age, you ought to slow down a little bit. Now, we ain't saying you ought to be put out to pasture or nothing. It's... Well, that's comforting. Oh, and... Well, you know, you know a man with three sons ought, ought to be able to get a little of the load taken off his back. <laughs> Hmm. Well, that doesn't sound too bad to me. Sounds pretty good. You, you mean you don't mind? Why should I mind? <laughs> well, we thought that... Well, stop thinking and stop jawing and get to it or else the whole day will be gone. We're on our way, Paul. Be back before dark. Yeah, and, and, and with the rustlers. Be back by supper. Right. Be right. Uh, Paul, you sure you'll be all right? I'll try to make out, Hoss. Canyon to me. Yeah, but the tracks say it ain't so. They go in, but they don't come out. There uh, might be a way out at the other end. Or else they're still in there. I sure don't like the looks of it. I need to get trapped in there. You want to find those rustlers, or don't you? Well, yeah, but I want to find them. I don't want them finding me. Let's just be mighty careful. I sure don't like the looks of this. I don't know what you two are going to do, but I'm going to get myself a little closer to the ground. I ain't going to sit up here like no crow on the fence post. Slick and clean. I don't 
Well, I ain't. I ain't never gonna tease you again about wearing them clean shirts. Well, the only reason I wear them is because I knew you'd get shot one day. <laughs> That'll stop the bleeding. You'll be fine as a frog's hair in no time. You all right? Yep, I reckon I am. We ain't got ourselves many problems. We lost our horses. We ain't got no food and water. And even if I could walk, we couldn't get out of here. Them fellas are using real bullets up there. On top of all that, it's gonna be so cold tonight, it'd freeze a hide right off of a drunken cowboy, and we can't build no fire. Uh, at least we did one thing. What's that? Yeah, we found the rustlers. <laughs> Eat now. Uh, I'll wait a while. The boys should be along soon. Maybe they sleep out tonight. No, I don't think so. They said they'd be back before dark. Besides, they didn't take any food with them. They be back. Hmm? Mr. Hoss up there. He smell food cooking. He come to food like homing pigeon. What do you smell? Nah, it can't be. It can't be what? I swear I'd smell Hopsing's cooking. <laughs> We're over a half day's ride from the house. You can't smell that distance. Yeah, I don't know about that. I remember once Hoss smelling biscuits in a sandstorm. The storm was over and we got home. Sure enough, there were the biscuits. Remember that? Yeah. I wish I didn't. Roast pork and sweet taters? You come eat. Roast pork, sweet potato, keep warm much longer, all dry up. I'm afraid they've run into some kind of trouble. Always do. You eat. I'm not very hungry, Hopsing. They catch trouble? Okay. How you help by not eat? Just in case, better put that back in the oven. You want me sit up all night, keep fire and cook stove? No, no, you can let it go, Arda. When the boys come back, I'll fire it up again. Colder than a well digger's toenails out there. Where's Curly? Oh, he's keeping an eye on them heart rights. Throwing in a couple of shots now and again. Just to let him know who's boss. Any doubt in your mind who's boss around here? Didn't mean nothing by that. <sighs> Never thought coffee'd taste better than whiskey, but it does. How long before dawn? What you worrying about? Sun comes up, it comes up. You figure come daylight, we can uh, pick off them cartwrights and get the herd on the trail, huh? Sure, sure. Do you think I'd throw in with Josh Tatum? Didn't know what I was doing? Oh, you got it all figured out, boss. I mean, they ain't going nowhere without them horses. And that big feller's hitting the leg. And... The only thing is, they'll be dug in deep by daylight. Well, then we'll dig him out. Providing old Ben Cartwright doesn't come looking for his boys at that time. That old goat, what can he do? What can he do? Well, he's just one more man, ain't he? Sometimes that one more man is just one too many. The Tatums are due here in the morning to help drive the herd. That makes six of us. Figure three to pick off them Cartwright pups. That, that leaves three to take care of the old man. That ought to do it. Yeah, it should. 
You know something? One slug takes care of one man. I don't care who he is. You're new around here, Johnny. Yeah. Maybe that's what you need. Somebody who don't get the shakes around old Ben Cartwright. I'll take care of him. Johnny, you see that you do. Good shot. Yeah. Ain't no way to get at him. Where is he? You see them rocks up there? The great big one on the left and the two little ones on the right just piled on top of each other? Yeah. He's behind those little ones on the right, and there ain't no way to get at him. I'll get him. You know what we're gonna do, shoot through the rocks? Nope. All those times we were in Virginia City and you were busy chasing girls and he was busy throwing people over tables, you know what I was doing? You're probably down at the bank counting your money. Yeah, checking the books to find out if the bank's gonna go broke. Well, I was improving my education, playing billiards. That big rock on the left's the cushion. The character behind the little rock is the object ball, and this slug is the cue ball. Reckon you hit him? Well, I should have. The angle was right. What'd you do, try to change position? A wise guy down there must have bounced one off the rocks. You reckon Paul started out after us yet? I doubt that. After we told him we'd do all his fighting for him, he's probably sitting at home taking it easy, waiting for us to ride in. You go now, Mr. Cartwright? Yeah. You go Virginia City, get Sheriff? No, there's no need for that. Oh, you think no trouble? Yes, I think no trouble. What have you got there? A sandwich. This is for Little Joe and Mr. Adam. Mm -hmm. This is for Mr. Hoss. Yeah, seems about right. You tell Mr. Hoss I cook turkey for supper. Oh, that's fine. What are the rest of us going to eat? Oh, <laughs> it's a pretty funny joke, Mr. Cartwright. No, not so funny. Have to kill another turkey, pick another turkey, stuff another turkey, cook another turkey. Big joke. Goodbye. Johnny. <laughs> the way it's going to be, huh? I give you a beating. Now, every time I poke my face out of the brush, I'm looking down a gun barrel. You're kind of poor loser, ain't you, Ben? You stole one of my steers. You're on my land. For all I know, those wolf pup sons of yours are behind a tree right now with a beat on me. If that was so, you wouldn't be standing there talking about it. Now, come on, give me back my guns. I'll give them back to you when I'm ready. Getting mighty edgy over one measly steer, ain't you? I've already told you, Josh. Any man needs food can get a steer just for the asking. But the Ponderos has lost hundreds of head in the past month through rustling. I'm not edgy over the one you stole. And I ain't edgy over the hundreds you lost, unless you're accusing me of being a part of it. If I was, I'd tell you. How about my guns? You find your guns about a mile up the trail. The back feels better that way. What's the matter, Ben? Don't you trust me? No. 
I don't trust you, Josh. Besides, I gotta be on my way. Oh, yeah, you Cartwrights always got big things to do, ain't you? Big enough for me, going after my sons. Your sons? What happened? They lost or something? They went up into the high country to look for the rustlers. They didn't get back last night. I'm going after them. No posse? You going all by yourself? I haven't got time for a posse. They're my sons. What would you do if they were yours? No sign of him yet? No. If he's coming, he ought to show up pretty soon. Now, he's got to come up that draw. When he does, like a sitting duck. Yeah? Well, if he's alone, you can take him. Well, he's got a posse along. Empty that rifle, and we'll get out of here. Hey, how's Curly? Staying away from rocks, you can bet. Well, he ain't hurt too bad. I've got a bandage on it and stop the bleeding. Man, I sure could use some whiskey. We should have thought of that. I did. Had a pint in my saddlebag. Where is it now? Give it to Curly. He needs it more than you do. Well, you tell him to save some for me so I can get this night chill out of my bones. You just take care of old Ben Cartwright. I'll see that you get a case of the stuff. Now you took long enough getting there. Well, we ain't rich enough to buy horses. They hang a man for stealing them. <laughs> we come as soon as we could. Which way did you come? Up over the ridge, like I said I would. I don't suppose you've seen anything of Ben Cartwright. Yeah, I seen him right after I started out. He had me bushwhacked as pretty as you ever seen. How come he didn't shoot at you? I talked him out of it, that's how come. I can handle Ben Cartwright. We don't have to worry about him anyway. Johnny's waiting for him. So he didn't go to Virginia City for a posse. Mm. Looks like we got them cart rats right where we want them. Maybe you have, maybe you ain't. Where's Johnny? He's covering the draw where Ben's got to come. Why don't you get down there and back him up? Oh, wait, there's no need for that. Johnny can take care of him. A chipmunk couldn't get by him. I don't care if a chipmunk can get by or not. I'm thinking about Ben Cartwright, and I don't want that old coot getting in here. Gus. You go down there and back him up just like I said. Well, ben got you spooked. He ain't nine feet tall. You I guy. know, I know, but we ain't taking no chances. Now, where's Curly? He's keeping them three cart rides pinned down. You know something? One of them got Curly in the shoulder. I told you to be careful, didn't I? Jack, go spell Curly off. Whereabouts is he, Jake? 
See the needle pointed rock over yonder? He's hunkered down behind it. Better let him know you're coming. He's getting skittish as a hungry coyote. All right, have some coffee. Where's the herd? Up on the mesa. Plenty of grass there. Ain't nowhere for him to go. What you worrying about? Ben Cartwright. But I told you I got... I him. know. You told me Johnny's taking care of him. And Johnny ain't but a kid. He don't know Ben Cartwright. Ben's got to come up through that draw, and Johnny's got him in his sights he can't miss. He ain't there. What do you mean, he ain't there? Well, like I said, he ain't there. I looked all over for him. I never should have sent that darn kid down there. Why don't you let a man handle it? He might have changed position. You believe that? No, I reckon I don't. Where that old buzzard is now? Howdy, Josh. I wish I had a quarter of that stuff. That slug still in there, Curly? Yeah, it's still in. Feels just like a hot branding iron. Josh, how about us getting this over with so I can get to a saw bones? I've got to get the slug out of here. Yeah. You take it easy for a spell, Curly, and you favor that shoulder. Gus, you go on back down to where Johnny was and keep your eyes peeled. Jake, let's you and me see if we can't do something about these cartwright boys. Get the rifles. Paul is coming. I sure hope he brings some sandwiches. I swear my stomach's empty. A chicken liver would feel like a full meal. Well, you can't have any food. How come? You're wounded. Wounded man ain't supposed to have anything. Not even water. Dad, burn it. I'm wounded in the leg, not in the belly. Well, that don't make any difference. Right, Joe? That's right. I heard it from a doctor in Virginia City. Really? Mm-hmm. That'll kill you. Why, them dirty, no good for nothing grabbing. <laughs> Take food right out of a man's mouth. Hey, Adam. Yeah? See that little clump of rocks up there, that dead bush in the middle? Yeah. They got me a real live one in there. He's setting up a pattern. Every time I squeeze off around, enemy fires one back at me before I can even clear my chamber. Watch. You see him? Uh-huh. Try him again. He's getting careless. He's hit. Yeah, you didn't even shoot. That's right. Hey, must be Paul. <laughs> hey, hot diggity. He's coming in. 
Hope he's got some sandwiches. I figured you weren't coming. Hey, Paul, did you bring any food? Yeah, I did. It was in my saddlebags, but I got bushwhacked and my horse spooked and run off. Hey, what happened to your leg? Uh, I got shot. It, it didn't bust no bones, I don't think. I, I can't walk on it, though. Uh, Paul, what kind of food was in them bags? I don't know. Hop Singh said something about turkey, and I suppose it was some of that real tender roast beef of his. Dad, burn it. Since you didn't make it here with it, I sure do wish you'd have sent cheese. Cheese? Why? Because I don't like cheese. Thought maybe you went to Virginia City to get the sheriff and a posse. Oh, by the time I realized it was real trouble, I didn't have a horse. Well, don't you think we're not glad to have you with us, Parvin? That puts you in the same jam we're in. Why not? My name's Cartwright, too, isn't it? Bad, son. Not too bad. Easy, boy. How'd it happen? I don't know. I was shooting down at them three Cartwrights. Next thing I know, I'm hit. Couldn't have been one of them, though. They didn't have that angle on me. Ben Cartwright. Had to be. Johnny's gone. Now you're hit. There. That'll take care of the bleeding. Pa? Is it busted up bad? No, it ain't nothing but a scratch. You'll hardly even have a scar to show to some pretty gal. <laughs> Give him another shot of that whiskey. How is it? Well, how would it be? He's shot, Eddie. I was just wondering. Living this way, I always figured we'd catch some lead one day. But thinking about it, seeing your boy with a slug in him is two different things. He might have been killed. This ain't exactly a beast thing I've got in my shoulder. Yeah, I know it, Curly, but it ain't the same thing. It may not be the same to you, Josh, but it's the same thing to me. One old buzzard holding up six men. It sure seems what like... What six men? Ain't you forgetting something? Johnny's gone. You and Jack are hit. The way I figured that leaves only three, not six. Stinking Ben Cartwright. Why did he have to stick his nose into this? What's he gonna do? Let us keep his boys pinned down till he runs out of ammunition? One of them's wounded. You think he's gonna like that? That'll turn him as mean as a trapped cougar. You all right? He's gonna be. Did you see Gus? Yeah, Gus is all right, but I seen something else. Right. Ben Cartwright is down there with his boys. What did I tell you? Anybody else with him? No, but he got in there with a couple of rifles and probably some extra ammunition. He's gonna be a tough nut to crack. I never said he wouldn't be, did I? You never said nothing. You're so full of ideas. Now, come on, let's hear one of them. Well, first off, I think you better take Curly cross country to Silver City and find a sawbones. That slug in his shoulder's got to come out. All right, all right, but what about the herd? Right now, that herd we wrestle don't seem so important. What are you aiming to do? Just walk out of here? You got a better idea? Yeah, I'll give the orders. Now, why don't you just try that? I never should have thrown in with you in the first place. I might know you'd go soft. Just because a man don't want to see his sons get killed don't mean he's going soft. As far as I'm concerned, it does. Uh, Curly, think you can set a horse? You just lead me to him. All right. You better get out of here. Curly, you take care of that shoulder, boy. Thanks, Josh. What are you doing that for, Pa? For to keep from getting shot when I talk to Ben Cartwright. What do you want to talk to him for? You got shot. They might get Gus. That's pretty.
Pretty quiet, Pa. Yeah. Hey, Pa, look. It's Josh Tatum. Dang, if I trust you. Oh, hold, it, hold it, hold it. But, Pa! Never mind. Just do as I say. I'm still running this show. show concern, isn't it? And for the record, there's a clean wound in the leg. It'll be all right. Jack got shot in the arm. Well, what'd you expect? Did nobody get hurt? Ben, I didn't figure it'd turn out this way. You see, we've been rustling some of your stock. Well, it didn't seem like much you having so many. It didn't hardly seem like stealing. I suppose ambushing my sons didn't seem much like shooting. I was miles away when a big one got shot. Oh, now you're going to tell me that if you'd been here, you'd have put a stop to it. I've done a lot of things in my time that I ain't proud of, Ben. And today, I might have gotten my kids killed. I might have killed one of yours. You're alive right now because you didn't. All right, Ben! I only come back here because I'm sorry for what I've done. I figured you was man enough to take into account that I ain't rich. I ain't no boss and no ponderosa. I got the same feeling toward my boys as you got toward yours. Well, maybe you ain't man enough. Maybe all you want is just revenge. Well, if that's what you want, you better dig in deep and save your ammunition. That is, unless you shoot me in the back when I walk out of here. Josh! Now, nobody's going to shoot you in the back. Now, we're pretty well hold up here. We've got plenty of ammunition. If you and your gang figure you haven't had enough, you just say the word and we can start this ruckus all over again. Don't you stand there yelling at me! Do well, you want to go on with this, or don't you? You want to try your luck again. Ben, you got me wrong. Ain't all the cattle in Nevada's worth one of our boys. That's what I come here to tell you. Oh, by golly. <laughs> Both reaching for the same conclusion, except we're butting our heads together like old billy goats. No. We're, we're like a couple of them she-bears with a litter of cubs. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't never tried to mess around with one of them, have you? Me? <laughs> I got more sense than that. <laughs> yeah, me too. Well, why are we messing with each other? I can't figure it. Ben, here's me and my boys. I figure we can rig up a litter and help you get the big one back to the Ponderosa. Then we'll help you round up the cattle that we rustled. Afterward, you can take us down to Virginia City to see the sheriff. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get the boys out of here. Seems how he had to shoot one. I wish it had been the little one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> I'm saying I'm dying of starvation. That's all that's matter to me. I got turkey. Oh, good. That'll do for a starter. Then later on, you can fix me a full meal. <laughs> he make joke? I don't think so. I got two turkey. All right, Hopsing, that'll do for a start. Uh, you better get some beefsteaks going. The Tatums are staying for dinner. I think they're hungry. They've had a hard day. Very good. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I 
Indeed, you'd want to get into Virginia City to have Jack's arm patched up, Josh. The sooner the better. So I, uh, long walks. So I had the uh, boys saddle up three horses for you. More than decent of you, Ben. As soon as we see the sheriff, I'll have someone bring these horses back. I reckon we'll be staying there quite a while. Yeah, well, I reckon you're right. Rustling's a serious crime. I ain't denying it. Of course, uh, seeing as how you, you didn't really go through with it, and seeing as how you told us where the cows are... I ain't asking no favors. I'm not offering any, except for the run of the horses. I expect you'll want one of your boys to go along with us, see we get to the sheriff, and then get these horses back to you. Why? Can I trust you? Ben, when I get straightened out with the law, I hope things will be different between you and me. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, well, what are you waiting for? You're going to stand around until you get blood poison in that arm? You heard, Mr. Cartwright. If you ain't forgot how to ride, get started. For a whale of tar out of both of you. Dang wolf pups. Raising kids ain't easy, Ben. No. Sure isn't, Josh. Of course, there's, uh, there's one good thing. A man can sure start taking it easy once his boys are grown big enough to take care of things. Afternoon, ma'am. Well, what do you think? I think we need to have a beer. No, no, no. I mean, I mean about her. About who? What are you talking about? My girl. You mean that was your girl? Mm-hmm. Oh, ain't she wonderful? Mm -hmm. hey, that... That's Margie, the one you're going to bring out to supper? Mm hmm You didn't even act like you knew her. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It uh, sometimes happens to me when I get around her. I don't know. I just kind of get all tied up inside. <laughs> Boy, ain't she something, though. Huh? <laughs> uh, Joe, uh, better give us three beers. Package over there. Can't keep the Duke waiting, you know. Disgustingly provincial. Oh, come off it. Come on now, let's get a move on with that baggage. Okay, oh, thank you. Oh, there you are, my man. You have uh, reservations for the Duke of London and his entourage. Let's have a little service now. Oh, madam. Uh, your hand. Hmm? I kiss the hand of the most beautiful uh, lady I've seen since I've been in this beastly country. Here, here. Hold your horses now, Dookie. It's the men what pays our wages, and it's the ladies what takes them away, you understand? Come on, let's go in the pub. Miguel is fair crying out for a nip. Joe, set up some drinks for the boys. Did Adam come in with you? No, I left a couple of days ago, Roy. I had to make a little trip to San Francisco. Make way for the Duke of London! 
All right, you blokes, now out of the way. Give the Duke some elbow room. Drinks for the house. You'll have to get in line, stranger. Drinks are bought for this round. The Duke of London waits for no one. Come, fellow, a bottle. You, a drink on the Duke of London. I'm sorry, mister, but uh, little Joe already bought me a drink. Gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? The Duke of London, champion of the British Empire, on a world tour, challenges all comers. Any man who stands four rounds will be paid $500 American money. Do you dare, Yankees? Yankees, a nation of dolts and cowards. Ah, oh, knock it, Bobo. We'll take a pound or two from them, don't you worry. You know, you really showed that crowd something down there. You was real prime. Look at this filthy place. Virginia City. Nothing but a foul pig pen. Ah, oh, come off it. We seem worse. Although I must say, I have never tasted such bad whiskey. <laughs> what I wouldn't give for some good old London ale. And you and your liquor. Well, can't you stop guzzling even for a moment? Why should I? Every man to his own sin, I say. <laughs> well, you could hardly call yourself a man. You're know, like the rest of these donkeys around here who have to wear guns to protect themselves. We'll have to be extremely lucky to get a fight in this town. Uh, you just keep on playing the game, Bobo. We'll get our fight. You know, you've got a knack, you have. I have never known of any one man who could get so many other men hating him in such a short time. You're a marvel. That's what you are. And you know, when they hate you enough, that's where we get our fight. So you go on being your own natural self. You drunken sot. Ah, uh, you can call me names, Bobo, but you can't escape me. Oh, will you shut up? Ah, uh, well, I know you too well. Every time you get like this, it's because of some skirt. It wouldn't be the little barmaid you took a fancy to now, would it? You don't suppose she's out playing a little slap and tickle with one of these here American cowboys while the handsome Duke of London is pacing up and down the floor now, do you? <laughs> now, you leave the women to me, because I handle them a lot better than you handle this filthy rubbish you are drinking. You know, this is this is just great. I mean, it's just wonderful of you, Mr. Cartwright, to, to go to all this trouble, invite me out for supper and everything. Well, we're very happy to have the opportunity of making your acquaintance, Miss Fuller. J.D. talks so much about you. Uh, will you have some dessert? Hmm? Oh, uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, oh, and, and, and just call me Marge. Uh, everybody does. Uh, honey, do you want some pie? Well, no, thanks, sir. I mean, ma'am. <laughs> well, you boys had quite a time in town, didn't you? This uh, prize fighter, uh, what did you say his name was? Uh, the Duke of London, Paul. I ain't never seen a Duke before, but they're all like that feller. I don't ever care nothing about seeing another. I wish you'd have been along with us, Paul. This man makes more enemies just walking into a room than anybody I ever saw in my life. Well, you boys did right to ignore him. Well, you should have seen what he did to me, Mr. Cartwright. He stopped me right in the middle of the lobby and grabbed my hand and kissed it. Well, if I'd have known that, I'd have taken a wallop at him. Well, J.D., hand kissing in Europe is, uh, is quite common. Probably just a gesture. <laughs> Not the way he did it, it wasn't. He looked at me like he owned me or something. Yeah, I should have walloped him. I'm afraid you wouldn't have stood much of a chance, J.D., the man is a professional prize fighter. You know, his fists are considered lethal weapons by law. Well, I got a couple of lethal weapons of my own. Now, you hold on there. Don't you get any big ideas just because you're 
big and strong doesn't mean that you're a match for a professional prize fighter. Just stay away from this duke, or whatever it is that he calls himself. No amateur can stand up to a professional. Just keep out of his way. I'm afraid we're not being very polite to our guest. Oh, that's all right. Don't mind me. I kind of enjoy talking about him. I sure never met a man like him before, and I've met a lot of them. You sure got a nice place here. You know, I... I never lived in a house in all my life. Yeah, me neither. You will, J.D. Whenever you get married, uh, we'll take over the house down by the forks. J.D., why don't you take Marge outside, show around the place? Oh, could we, J.D.? I'd love to see it. Well, it's pretty dark out there. I don't know what she could see. Well, there's a full moon. She ought to be able to see enough. You go ahead. Uh, the boys will clean up the dishes. Clean up the dishes? Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. You you go ahead, J.D. Well, uh, okay. Laughing right in front of the both of them. <laughs> Me too, Joe. Old JD's collar was tight. I thought his eyes were going to pop out. Yeah. The thing I can't figure out is how JD ever got up enough nerve to talk to her in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> well, a gal like that usually starts a conversation herself, Pa. A girl like what? Well, I mean, she's a. Uh... Well, she's a dance hall girl. I thought she was very nice. What did you think, Horse? I, I thought she was very nice. Hey, now, wait a minute. I didn't say I didn't think she was very nice. Yeah, boy, it's, it's just that old J.D. and her just don't seem to go together for some reason or other. I, I don't know. Well, that's right. That's all I meant by it, Pa. I mean, look, you know how J.D. is. He's, he's so shy and everything. And I don't know. I just don't think it'll ever work out. It'll work out. If he loves her. J.D. Huh? Honey, are you afraid of me? No, ma'am, of course not. Uh, now, over there, uh, that's a smokehouse. You know, right? Uh, you can just see the smoke there coming out of the smokehouse. Well, if you're not afraid of me, then why don't you look at me when you talk to me? Well, I was looking at the smokehouse. It's JD, right over right there. Turn around and look at me. Yes, ma'am. Now, that's better. You know, I, um... I like what you said in there, I mean, about uh, being willing to fight the Englishman over me. It was a real nice thing to say. Well, I don't think fellas ought to go around kissing girls when... Well, I mean, if they're not... You know, sometimes a girl doesn't mind being kissed. Well, if you liked it, that's, that's your business. But those flashy guys always seem to fool the women, but he don't fool me. I wasn't talking about him, J.D., but at least he wasn't afraid. Who do you think I am? I'm willing to try and find out. Well, I may not be as fancy as that big bag of wind, but I ain't afraid of anything, including him. I bet you're afraid to kiss a girl. Yeah? Uh-huh. Well, are you? No, I'm not. I mean, when I find a girl I want to kiss, she's going to get good and kissed. I'll, I'll get the buggy. Uh, I guess Pa was right. J.D. is in love with her. How do you know? Oh, if he wasn't, he would have kissed her. Joe, that don't make sense. Well, of course, I know you're older than I am, but there's certain things I've had a little more experience in than you have. And this just happens to be one of them. Yeah. I bet you he kisses her on the way home. Ah. I, he'll, he'll try to kiss her. She's not going to let him. Dad, Bernie, Joe, that just don't make sense. Mr. Duke. Well, one does not address a duke as mister, now does one. Well, 
I'm not anxious to address you in any way, shape, or form. I just want to warn you that... About a... what? I am perfectly capable of taking care of myself. Constable. Now, we don't address a sheriff as a constable now, do we? I just want to point out that as a professional fighter, if you use your fists on anyone, I'm going to jail you for assault with a deadly weapon. Oh, then, in the event that I am attacked, I will not even be allowed to defend myself. Now, you know better than that. Besides, I have a feeling that nobody around here is going to be foolish enough to try a thing like that. So I suggest you just move on your way. Is there anything else before you leave? I think that'll be enough. Still waiting, eh, Bobo? Maybe she ain't coming home tonight. Oh. Now you're giving me the silent treatment. First you knock me about, then you act as if I wasn't here. Well, I am here, Bobo, and you know I'm here. And when you need me, I'll be working late in me office. In other words, in the pub. I, I, I don't know what what came over me. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm sorry it happened. It's all right, Mr. Lambert. It's forgotten. But look, look, I I don't blame you for slapping me. I, I had it coming, but well, you look so, so pretty there with the moonlight in your hair. I just all of a sudden had to kiss you, Marge. I, I'm... You I'm, clumsy fool. You stupid oaf. How dare you even address this lady? Come on, Jenny. Come on. Scum, you coward, you yellow belly. How very brave you are, with a gun pointed at someone who is completely unarmed. Your bravery overwhelms me to such a point that I can no longer tolerate the sight of you. Well, come, my good fellow. Are you not going to pull the trigger? J.D., don't, don't get mixed up with him. Go on home. Fair fight! Here in first now, you all saw it. They yanked it in first. It's a fair fight. <laughs> Surely you have a better man in Virginia City. And if you haven't, well, I suggest you send for one. Because the champion here expects to have a fight in this fair town of yours. Somebody get a doctor. He's hurt bad. Hank, you and Mike take him over to the dock, will you? So you found one, eh? After I told you the law. Well, you're going to the calaboose. Oh, no, he ain't. The Yank hit him first. Every bloke here saw it. Is that right, Joe? Yeah, that's right. J.D. hit him first. You had better get these laundered. No hard feelings, Sheriff. Come on in, I'll buy you a drink. I'm sorry, you couldn't have seen me up against a more worthy opponent. One could hardly call it a fight, could one? Of course, I could uh, tell from the outset that you were a woman who uh, needed a man, not a boy. Well, now you've found one. Doctor said he never saw so much damage done by a man's fist. And you know the funny thing? 
The boys that saw it said it looked like he was just tapping him. I'll tell you something else, too. J.D. ain't the easiest man in the world to take. I've seen him take three miners one night in Virginia City single-handed. Roy, what started it? Well, from what I understand, it was that girl Marge. The man's a professional. He ought to be jailed. But J.D. took the first swing. Well, it was good of that very nice girl to let him get his head knocked off on her behalf. I don't care if J.D. did swing first. I'll guarantee you he didn't start it. Come on, Joe. Right. You boys stay right where you are. And stay right here. Look at J.D. Just look at him. You want us to stand here and do nothing? That's exactly what I want you to do. Stand there and do nothing. You can't gun down a man for, for defending himself. Now, J.D. was warned. He was warned. That's my... my fault, Mr. Carter. I... don't nobody tackle him. It's my fault. I know what he's going to do that to a friend of ours. I agree with Joe, Paul. I don't care who you agree with. You're staying out of it. Oh, Marge. Oh, Marge saw it. She... She saw me make a fool of myself. I... I can never see her again. Paul, I can hurt that man. No. If I can get one hand on him, Paul, I, I can said get... no. Hawk, they say he strikes faster than a rattlesnake. Yeah, well, you just wait till I get my hands on him. Just a point, he won't hold still long enough. Yeah, well, if Hoss can't catch him, the two of us can't. Right, right, just, 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 just be quiet and listen to me. Now, first, as I said, J.D. was warned not to mix with the Duke. Second, I've seen professional fighters at work. When I was young, and that wasn't so long ago, I thought I was pretty good, too. Well, one of them showed me how good I was. That's when this was broken for the first time. I couldn't think straight for a week. But, Paul, I'm bigger than you. You may be bigger than I am, but you're no tougher than I was in those days. A man just wasn't designed to be beaten up the way a prize fighter can do it. There's another way, and a better way. Yeah, like what? If he's so anxious to have a fight, we'll get him another professional prize fighter to fight with. Paul, there ain't no professional prize fighters around here nowhere. No, but I know where there is one. I'll send a wire to Adam in San Francisco. There's a fighter there, a great fighter, Heenan, the Benicio boy. We'll pay him to get here as fast as he can. Roy? Yeah? If I ride out the wire, will you take it into town? I'll take it to San Francisco myself if I have to. Still like to get my hands on that Duke. Hey, did you hear that, J.D.? I'm gonna get that Venetia boy to take care of the Duke. Yeah, he's a real champ, J.D. He'll take care of that Duke. Marge saw it. Marge... Marge saw him make a fool of me. He ain't hearing nothing we're saying. I'd still like to get my hands on that Duke. Now, I'm gonna have to do what Pa said. Of course, that don't mean we can't ride into town tomorrow and sort of break the news about the Benicia boy. I'd kind of like to see the look on the Duke's face when we tell him that. Yeah. I'd sort of like to see that Duke fella myself. Hey, wait a minute. I said we're gonna break the news to him, not his neck. Agreed? Agreed, little brother. And another thing. Where's your dartboard? My what? Your dartboard. You know, How is he? How's J.D.? A, a little dartboard. late to be asking, ain't he? Is he all right? Oh, yeah, he's fine. He's got a busted nose, lost a few teeth. Otherwise, he's feeling just fine. And he, he ain't too pretty. It's gonna be a while before he feels like doing any courting again, too. I know everybody thinks that it's my fault. Would you take a message to him? Would you tell him that I want to see him? Well, I don't think he's gonna to want to see anybody for a while. Especially you. Now, you excuse us, ma'am. We have some business to take care of. Elania! Take you on two at a time, he will. The old blanket town. Because there ain't a man, god, or demon could whip the duke. 
I trained him from a little whippersnapper I did, and he's the greatest. Got a fist like a rock, and an eye like an orc. So bring on your finest. Uh, well, that's exactly what we intend to do. Bring on the finest. You? <laughs> You're funnier than that bloke last night. <laughs> no, no, not me, little man. I'm talking about the Benicia boy. Benicia boy? Ah, you're trying to fool old Limey. You think I'm drunk, so you're playing jokes on me. No, this ain't no joke, little man. Well, I can't believe it. Well, you can believe it. Benicia boy, Heenan. Hey, uh, Joe, it looks like the little man did all that loud bragging ain't so sure of himself now, don't it? Yeah. Hey, well, it couldn't be that you and, uh, and the Duke are a little afraid of the Benicia boy, could it? Afraid? <laughs> oh, that's a rich one. Afraid? The Duke of London afraid of Benicia, boy? You know what? We've been chasing him all across the country, and now he gets delivered to us on a silver tray. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, wait till the Duke hears this for the news. He'll be pleased fit to bust. <laughs> Oh, that's a rich one. How about a beer? Hmm. In the left again. Show us the old one, too, now. All right, now come in a little. Sure dances around pretty, don't he? Yeah. Whatever you do, don't show him the big wallop. We gotta make him bet on Benicia boy, remember? That's it. All right, now, jab. All right, another jab. That's it. All oh, right. Another jab. You didn't get a telegram from Adam yet, did you? Nope. It's been a week. Could be the wires are down again. Oh, no, no. I checked that. What happens if the Benicia boy don't show up? Oh, please. Will you fight him yourself? <laughs> well, the time was when you would. Yeah. yeah, well, this isn't the time. I just have to give him that $1,000 purse. A $1,000? Well, that's what I had to guarantee him for the fight. Okay. Get those knuckles in there, Bobo. I can hold his fist fancy like too. Get those knuckles in there. Man, I could really slice a man to pieces. Yeah. He might slice some men to pieces, but he'd have to hit a whole lot harder than that to cut me up. Yeah, maybe so, but not after a few rounds. Mm -mm. Huh? Well, I'd sure give a pretty to try him anyhow. Now, when they can come in with a short punch. Hey, look who came to watch the Duke. Oh, another jab. JD! Honey, are you all right? I'm, uh, I'm fine. Uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm in a hurry. JD, how you doing? <laughs> Marge, excuse me, boy. Marge, what's wrong? What's right? All you want to do is reach up for something better. Everybody says no, you stay in your place. Oh, Marge, you know it doesn't matter what people think. Nothing mattered until J.D. Looks like that's over, too, doesn't it? She sure looked pretty, didn't she? Oh, come on. Don't tell me you're still sweet on her after what happened. Well, it wasn't her fault. Well, I think it's enough for one day. I've got something better to do. Yeah, and I know what it is. And it's fair asking for trouble. Women, they'll be the death of both of us. 
Oh, come on, let's get a beer, huh? That feller's just plain ordinary me. For two cents, I'd... Come on. No more tears, eh? What do you want? Oh, there's no need to be coy with me. I saw you watching the workout. You get out of here. Oh, come, my dear. You might fool the majority of these clods around here, but you don't fool me. I know you and your kind. And I know what's bothering you. Guns. Yeah, like all the men in this godforsaken country, the first thing they turn to is guns. Go on me. Well, there's no need to lie to me. I know you and your kind only too well. You're trying to be better than you really are. But you can't. And deep down inside your heart, you know you can't. And you know you never will. What are you laughing at? Oh, come on. Don't tell me that you've never been laughed at by a woman before. Hold your tongue! <laughs> be laughing when I get through with you. Let it go, Bobo. Oh, it's you. Yes, and it'll always be me. It happened again, didn't it? Another one laughed at you. I told you it would happen again. I've taken all I'm going to take from you, you despicable little gutter snipe. J.D. Marge. Well, what happened? It's Duke. He's beating that poor little man. He's going to kill him. Where are they? They're in my room. He broke into my room. Come on, Joe. Right. I'll be right back. J.D., don't leave me. Don't ever leave me. I need you so much. You need me? I need you. Oh. Why me? Why me? Yeah, I'm in here. You gonna make it, Limey? Oh, take it easy now. Oh. I'm gonna sit real easy down on the bed. I'll be all right. That's See, it. it's just the Duke's way of doing things. My brother don't always see matters my way, yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't have guessed it, would you? Me and the Duke 
Brothers. Brothers? Yes. You see, his real name's Clarence Simpson. Mine's Harry Simpson. When he was a little tyke, I called him Bobo. The baby he was. Then they put us in one of them homes. But I got us out of there. Well, you've no idea how I worked and slaved to put that boy through school. See, I, I wanted to make a gentleman out of him. I... Here, Lammy, you just take it easy. You might be hurt serious and don't even know it. Now, it... what he said hurts much more than what he done. He can do without me, he says. Just don't seem possible that a man could treat his own brother like that. He's always been the same. I taught him, you know. He was going to the dogs, he was. I made him a boxer. You see, that that's how I earned the money to pay for his schooling. Then when I got too old to fight, I, I taught him the trade. And now he, he says he can do without me. Maybe you're better off without him, Limey. I taught him good, too. I wanted him to be the champ. And he might be if, he, if he'd only leave the skirts alone. But he hurt Marge. He would have. Yes, he would have. He, he's done it before. Oh, I uh, might as well face up to it. He's just no good. So now I'm through with him. You understand? I'm through with him. He thinks he don't need me. He'll find out. Just let him find out. Joe, I don't care what Paul says. This is too much. Yeah, first J.D., then Marge, and now this. Joe? I'm with you. Let's go. Duke! Duke! Well, 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 the Cartwright clan. Have you got the Benicia boy with you? No. But we brought a message. Then deliver it and be on your way. All right. You wanted to fight. Well, now, Buster, you got it. I'll take you home for money, marbles or chalk, you just name it. challenge him, so the only thing we can do now is to see that everything is conducted properly. You think Horse can handle him? In a match like this? I only hope he doesn't get hurt badly. Yeah, you better study these London prize ring rules. Yeah, how you feeling, Hoss? I feel great, brother. Good. Just lean back, take it easy. Twenty-five on the horse against a hundred on the duke. No, I said I was through with him, and I mean it. I ain't going near his corner, so help me. But I gotta warn you, you're gonna get hurt, mortal bad boy. Uh, I've been hurt before. Well, don't you worry, Hoss can take care of himself. Yeah, give me some of that four to one money on Hoss card right here. One hundred on Hoss against. Oh, I did not do. You know, you've been very kind to me, my lad. Take a tip from me. You're going to try and cover that bet because you're going to lose. Yeah, well, don't you worry. My brother knows just what he's doing. Your brother? Yes. Come on, you feeling all right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay let's go. Hey, you put some of my money on that bet. Fifty bucks. I'm only half stupid. Come on.
Ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, this match is being held against my will. However, since it has been joined, it will be conducted fairly and properly according to the London prize ring rules. The round shall continue until one or both of contestants are down. When a man is down, his seconds may conduct him to his corner for the rest period. Would you like uh, a second assigned to your corner, sir? At the end of 30 seconds, the referee will call time. And the contestants must rise and come to the mark. Now, either man failing to toe the mark at the end of eight seconds after the referee calls time shall be deemed defeated. The judgment of the referee will be final and absolute. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you all know the referee, your sheriff, Roy Coffey. <laughs> You men have heard the rules. Timekeepers ready? The contestant will toe that mark. Ready? Time! Right, get him. Get him, Hoss. Jag, you gotta get inside him. Hit yeah. him in the stomach. You're gonna yeah. hurt him. Right. He, he's hitting me with that funny little old elf. I'm gonna get him first with it. Just uh... time. right you can't stay in there with a professional uh, he's gonna get a bunch of me joe i'm gonna get some of you i wonder if that's the way you want it
I knocked him down. Yeah, sure did knock him down. Oh, is that, is that you, Harry? It's me, Bobo. It's me, all right. He's a fair ball, like hitting the brick wall. Well, he's too strong for you. You've got to move around. Stay away from him. Oh, I don't know anymore, Harry. Oh, just stick it out there. Keep the old flag flying. I missed you, Harry. You did. I'm no good with her, you. Hey! Go get him! One. Just get up there. Two. Turn the line. Three. And give them the best you've got. Bobo. A new chance for the go, Hoss! Hoss, how do you feel? Good going, Hoss. I knew right. you could do Good it. Going. I knew it, Hoss. You left him. We beat the chance. Uh, what are you driving at, sir? He was, he was all alone. Oh, what a fuck. I'm not going to give him a little bit, boys. Boys, let's get out of here. Here to settle our account, sir. Harry, will you please pay the gentleman? Yes. Here you are, Governor. One thousand American dollars. Well. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, Paul, uh, if you're gonna show him the uh, you know. Oh, yes. Well, I, I almost forgot. I received a uh, telegram from my son in San Francisco. It says, uh, Benicia boy will not fight you in Virginia City. But he would be happy to meet you in San Francisco. You hear that, Bobo? We got the big one. God, blimey. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright? Oh, Mr. Cartwright, I, I was just showing my... Pardon me. That's all right, J.D., go ahead. What were you going to say? Oh, well, I was just going to say that Marge uh, loves the house. That's wonderful, Mr. Cartwright. I will not ask you to shake hands, but uh, I would like you both to know how really sorry I am. Oh, that's, uh, that's all right. Come on, Bobo. San Francisco and the Benicia boy, and you'll murder him. Well, I don't know about that. But we'll have a good bash at it, won't we, Harry? <laughs> we will and all. Ta-da! You know, when your little ones come along, I hope they're a little smarter than, uh, than those two. Hey, you know, I was, I was just thinking, there's a, there's a fighter in St. Louis, sort of an up-and-coming heavyweight, it's going out on the road. I was just wondering if we worked on that left hook of yours a little bit, if... What I tell you, no stage or mail today or any other day. Well, well now the we... Sierra's doing the best it can. We've been cut off from mail and supplies for six weeks now. Let's tear down the flag. Yeah. Now, Walker, just a minute. Hold it there. Oh, Gentlemen, oh, please, oh, hold it. Right. Now, just a minute. Now, look, when you asked me to head up this committee, you said we'd work out some kind of peaceful plan to get the stage back on schedule. We'll begin to act like a mob. Ben, we businessmen are fighting for our lives. The Sierra's pushing us to the wall. Oh, we're beginning to feel the same pinch of lack of mail and supplies out in the Ponderosa, too. That doesn't mean we have to lose our heads or become violent about it. Well, you ranchers don't have to pay $30 a sack for flour no, no, or 50 a cents we a pound for potatoes. Exactly what anybody else pays right here in Virginia City. Now, let's all just settle down and let's talk to Sims about it. Well, I wrote a letter to the head office. They're sending out a troubleshooter. 
Good. And by the time he gets here, we'll all be broke. Yeah, the Sierra is responsible for the high prices well, around here, just making just things scarce now. and hard to get. Let's and Sims is the Sierra in this town. I say let's run away. Just, just a minute. Come on. Trask. Jen Trask. <laughs> Go ahead, tear up the Sierra and run me out of town now. Go ahead, Mr. Walker. Sims, you get these citizens off Sierra property. Yes, sir. Hold on, Sims. And what gives you the authority to come in here and threaten us with a gun? Mister, there are 26 men who've questioned my authority. Now, they're all dead. I thought it was enough for you. How about that? You won't have any more trouble, Sims. I'm on my way to Latigo to get the Sierra running on schedule again. Latigo? Mr. Trash, that town's poison. Yeah, I got the antidote right here. Well, I understand that every no good gunman in the West is holed up in Latigo. Yeah, that's right. They're using it as a base to burn and plunder our stages and our freight wagons. Well, one man and one gun won't stand much of a chance against a whole town of killers. That's my job. I'm paid to do it. Of course, if there are any volunteers to help me clean out Latigo. Well, well, now, you can't count on them fellers out there. They've all got their businesses to take care of. Well, what businesses? If the Sierra ever stops running through here, this will be a ghost town. Oh, it never fails. You scratch a citizen with talk of volunteering his gun and he runs like a whipped dog. Ain't that the truth, honey? Sure is, Jed. Mr. Trask. I agreed to head up this committee and not backing down from it. Yeah, well, you might want to reconsider. If anything happens to you, the Sierra won't pay for as much as a pine box. You know... The Sierra is far more important to us than it is to itself. As far as your company is concerned, it's only so much profits. As far as we're concerned, the Sierra is our lifeline to the outside world. All right. Be ready to leave at sunup. Honey, looks like we bought ourselves another gun. Oh, you're wrong. You bought yourself four more guns. My sons will go along. The quicker this is settled, the better we'll all like it. Good. I want one thing understood. My first concern is the Sierra. When we get to Latigo, you'll all take orders from me. That's agreeable, Trask. As long as you remember that we're not hired gunmen. Look, let's get things straight. I'm tired of people thinking of me as a hired gun. I bring law and order to the Sierra wherever it needs it. Well, right now, it needs it in Latigo. Well, we're, we're all for law and order, Trask. Just want you to know that we, we don't intend to shoot first and ask questions later. And I don't intend to wind up on Boot Hill with a bullet in my back. This is the only kind of law those kind of men will understand. Well, Latigo doesn't sound like any picnic ground. Maybe you ought to send Mrs. Trask back to Virginia City. Bill? Adam Cartwright's worried about you. He thinks maybe I ought to send you back. You're my man, Jed. When you tell me to go back, I'll go.
town like this, the undertaker's a leading citizen. I'll have them heat some water for your bath, Jed. That'll be about an hour. Well, you can still back out if you want to. We have no intention of backing out. Why don't you suit yourself? I'll be over at the Sierra. It's right across the street. A peaceful place. Yeah. Let's get the horses down to Livery Stable. Plenty of cash in this and Big Mike. Uh, look, look, look at them greenbacks. Jed Trask, who sent for you? Mike Campbell, you're through. Get out. Tenders meat I ever at. There, try some. Melt in your mouth. Maybe you didn't hear me. I said you're through. Trask, you're invading the private office of the duly appointed division superintendent of the Sierra. Mike, you've got one hour to get out of town. Well, if I'm going to leave town, I might as well travel on a full stomach. Mike, you forgot something. All right, you too. Come on. Me? Well, see, I, I was only one doing hour. One hour. Uh, now that we got rid of Big Mike, we can get started straightening up this deep. Look, Chad. Chad, you're not going to let them ride off scot free. They must be prosecuted. Prosecuted with what? There isn't any law in this town. First things first, Ben. I work for the Sierra. Chad, when I came along on when this. When you trip... came along. You promised you'd take orders from me. Look, Ben. Latigo is like a snake. You cut off its head, and the rest of it'll die. An hour. He only give us an hour. That's time enough for you to go round up Cole Baker and his partner. Meet me in there. Anybody finds out he took over, you got no business in this town. Look, you just do like I say. I'll take care of Jed Trask. This had been allowed to go on a little while longer, Big Mike would have owned Virginia City. Uh, he's never that smart, Ben. Well, here's some more records to check. Hey, come on out and take a look at the barn. It's full of mail and supplies. Hey, Paul, take a look at this. That's where all the mail's been. This is close as I ever got to Virginia City. Yeah, there's enough stuff here to keep the town happy for a couple of months. You know, there must be supplies and mail out here for half the West. Yeah, it'd take us a month of Sunday to straighten all this out. Now, there's a stage coming in the end of the week. We can start moving some of it out then. Hey, yeah, you know, for a young one, you're real smart. Jed? Jed, you know, we're going to need half a dozen wagons and teams to load this stuff up. Well, there'll be a courier through here. I'll send the message to the home office. I'll go back to the stage depot right now and write it out. Come supper time, I'll see you all. I'll buy the drinks. All right. I may have misjudged that one. Well, you got to admit one thing. He sure knows his business. Yeah, that's for sure. Seems like this town's already quieter just since he's been here. Well, this mail isn't going to load itself. Come on, let's get to work. Yeah, yeah, you get to work. Man. 
Come here. You're in my way, boy. You're in my way, mister. Trask. Sit down or you give me his up. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy watching you die. Clear out of here, you vulture. breathing. He'll be all right. Joe, get the doctor. Right. You wanted to be part of this. Well, now you are. Which one of you was going to kill Mike Campbell? Doctor, let's get him upstairs. I'm here, Jed. I'm here. I can't stay trussed up like this. I got a job to do. Now you're not getting out of this bed until the doctor says so. You stop mother handing me. I'm in shape right now to get back on the job. I... Oh! There you see. Jed, quit worrying. The cart rides are down at the station right now. Now, they're taking care of everything. What did the cut rise know about running the stage line? But you'd be happy knowing they were staying on. Well, I, uh, I'm not in much shape right now to jump for joy. <sighs> Just the same, I'm glad that you... you asked him to stay on and run the depot. All I have to do now is figure out a way of running down Big Mike. Leave well enough, B. Jed. Big Mike has run like a whip dog. Honey, well enough won't leave me be. I can't let a man put a bullet hole in me and get away with it. Every two-bit gunman in the West would want to try the same thing. Everybody knows he tricked you. You've nothing to gain tracking him down like a hired killer. Don't you call me a hired killer. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. Honey, I've got a job to do. To do that job right, I've got to put the fear of Jed Trask into everybody and keep it there. Fear Jed or respect? It's the same thing, Bill. My gun got me my job, and my gun is going to keep it. If I let Big Mike stay alive, everybody would say the sand was running out of my craw. I just can't stand seeing you get hurt again. Listen, I thought you understood something. There are only two things in my life. My work and you. And my work is the only way I know to get you the things I want for you. the mail and his stuff from his home office. Well, we'll have plenty of letters for you to deliver to Virginia City. Tell Adam and Hoss to start loading. Right. Don't see Big Mike around. No, I guess you won't either. Jed Trask relieved him of his job. My name's Cartwright. My sons and I are helping him out. Jed Trask, huh? Yeah. Heard the company was making some changes here. Didn't figure they'd send out Trask. My eyes are good troubleshooter. Trouble with some troubleshooters. There's sometimes bigger trouble than they're sent out here to cure. Uh -huh. 
Is that what you think about Trask? I do. So do a lot of others at the home office. I reckon Trask can want these letters and way bills. And this one's for him personal. Oh, you want me to deliver it? No, siree. This is one pleasure I want for myself. I've waited a long time to deliver this letter. Skinny's sort of running a stage. He's going to need a man who can read and write better than he can handle a gun or hitch a team of horses. <sighs> all right, there it is. There's a rundown on all of the freight that is due here in the next few weeks. Hey, you know, by the time... By the time we get through our end of things here, everything should be back to normal. Oh, say so the driver had a letter for you. Did he give it to you? Yeah, it's right here. Might be a paycheck. It's about time, dude. The Undertakers? The Undertakers? He's also the local carpenter. Chairs, tables, and coffins are his specialty. Well, you can take it back. I don't want it. I don't care what you want. You're going to use it. You'll just get well that much sooner. Don't you agree, Mr. Cartwright? Yes, I think I do agree. All right, all right. What's this letter? You keep your hands away from that. I'm sorry. But being cooped up in this room has made me kind of shaky. Maybe you're right about the chair. At least I can get around a little bit. Well, you know, keeping busy is certainly better medicine than just sitting around in here. And even in a wheelchair, there are plenty of things to, for you to take care of down at the depot. There's something I'm a lot more anxious to take care of than the depot. That's Mike Campbell. Now, look, Trask, you're, you're in no condition to go riding after Mike Campbell. I'm not going to ride after Big Mike. I'm going to sit in that chair in front of this hotel. And sooner or later, Big Mike is going to get brave enough to come looking for me. And when he does, this will be the last thing he'll ever see. Oh, Trask, you're taking an awful chance, and... Why, in that wheelchair, you're, you're a sitting duck. I've been taking chances for the Sierra for 10 years. Maybe it's become a habit. Yeah, honey. I'm real glad you thought about that chair. Then while you're here, you want to give me a hand into the chair? All right. All right, all right, all right. I'll help you. I'm still around. Are you sure this is what you want? I know what I'm doing, Cartwright. Well, I hope so. I'll be across the way at the depot. I'm going to see that the stage gets up to Virginia City. Oh, I know this food ain't got hops in its touch, but it'll at least keep you from starving to death. What are you doing? I was making a bid for a second helping. What's bothering you, Pop? Oh, nothing, really. Trask? He's a pretty hard man to figure, isn't he? I don't trust him. Me neither. A strange job. I picked a strange man to handle it. There's certainly no denying his loyalty to the Sierra. Loyalty? Seems he's dedicated his whole life to it. Well, that's a point in his favor, wouldn't you say? Maybe. 
What do you mean? Well, he's... He's more than just loyal. He's become almost fanatic about it. And I've learned it's pretty hard to trust a fanatic. No matter how good his intentions are. What's the matter? Why don't you let me help you into bed? I'll stay up and think for a while. Well, that letter must be mighty important for you to lose sleep over it. The letter is company business. You don't have to worry about it. What's in it? I told you it's company business. No, it's more than that. Look, don't try Look, to... you jumped at me the first time I asked you about it. Now you're jumping at me again. I know when something's troubling you. I've been fired, Bill. Be true. Candid. There's always been somebody in Sierra management after my hide, somebody who didn't like my methods. Ten years of my life I spent building that stage line. Ten years. Now fired. Just kicked out like that. Only a job, honey. There are plenty of jobs for a man like you. Jed Trask doesn't go around begging for jobs, and he's no saddle tramp or fool kid to get kicked around either. Jed, we've got to face things as they come. Oh, honey, we've been through worse things than this together. That time that Mustang's hoof opened up your scalp. Bloody massacre in the Apache country. Right, don't tell me. Tell them. Tell the Sierra. It was my blood and sweat that marked that stage line all up and down the country. Mine. They supplied the equipment and the money, and I supplied the guts. Wherever that line started to fall apart, who held it together? Me, Jed Trask. Jed, the Sierra is only a pinpoint in this world. We can go someplace where you'd really... Run out! Are you telling me to run out? After I get rid of Big Mike, I'm gonna make this our town, Bill. I'm gonna bust the Sierra so wide open there won't be a trace of their mark left on this territory. Darling, sit down. You'll hurt yourself. No, I don't need that chair. I've been hit worse than this a dozen times. Chad, will you sit down? You're in no shape to be walking around. Yeah, that's right. Sure, everybody in town has seen me in that chair. I know I can't walk. I don't know what you're thinking, Jed, but I am not going to stand here and watch you get into trouble. Yeah. Yeah, everybody in town knows I'm tied to this chair. Oh, 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 boy. That's funny. That's real funny. I didn't want this chair to begin with, but now that I got it, I'm going to make it work for me. You can't do this. What about the Cartwrights? Well, what about them? I don't owe them anything. They came along because Virginia City was in trouble, not because of me. Chad, they came here as part of a committee to see that the stage gets through. Look, you're not going to fool them for long. They're bound to find out. Do you think they're just going to stand here and, and watch you ruin the Sierra all over again? Well, that's up to them, honey. But they just better not get in my way.
Get where I can see you. I don't care for anybody behind my back. Now sit down. Now, I want Big Mike. Where is he? He left town. You ought to know that. Thorne, you help me find him. I'll make it worth your while. Big Mike set us up. He covered for us. Now you expect us to turn on him? You'd turn on your own mother if there was enough money in it for you. You tie up with me and there will be enough. What do you take us for, Trask? Babes in the woods? You don't work for Sierra anymore. The driver told us. We didn't tell anybody else. I already made sure of that. So? What are you trying to prove, Trask? Look, Thorne, I can set you boys up better than Big Mike ever did. What's in it for you? Money for one thing. Satisfaction for another. I spent ten years building up that stage line, Thorne. I know their schedules. I know every shipment that comes through here. I can show you boys how to make more money than you ever dreamed of. You were always known as a pretty loyal company man. How do we know you're not setting us up for a double cross? I'm not taking you or anybody else as easy as this in the past few days. I, I, I would. Drink with him. You drinking together? Good, now will you help me find Big Mike? Yeah, I'll find him. What about those four men you brought from Virginia City? The card rides? I can handle them as easy as this. You want me to handle this, Trask? Oh, no. This is a pleasure I've been saving for myself. Stay here, boys. Shot a lot straighter, Mike. Now, just a minute, Trask. Thorn. Weasel! Stop him! Get back to more important things. Sierra. Jed, how are you feeling? Uh, 
Well, I'd feel a lot better if I could get out of this blasted wheelchair. You just stay there until you're ready to get out. Such a good morning. Another freighter overdue. Oh, yeah. Well, Big Mike is sure working overtime, huh? Well, somebody is sure working overtime. Well, it's got to be Mike. He's the only one who has the know-how to pull off those raids. Then he has second sight. Every wagon that was hit had value of a cargo aboard. It was almost as if they were receiving the shipment reports and schedules quicker than we did. I sure wish I was back on my feet, Ben. I'd like to give you a hand. Well, I know you do, Jada. We could sure use another hand. This is still my responsibility, Ben. I won't shirk it. Jada, I know how you feel. Look, couldn't we round up the few honest citizens left here and get all those gunmen and run them out of town? <laughs> honest citizens. Ben, these gunmen are their best customers. They'd rather run you out of town, you or me. Well, there must be a few honest citizens left with a little bit of pride in Latigo. Then you're not going to find one citizen who's willing to risk his life in order to clean the scum out of this town. Oh. Hey, everybody, look what I got. It's Big Mike. Look what I ran across in Rainbow Canyon. It's Big Mike, all right, Paul. That's right, Ben. I can walk fine. And this is my town now. It figures. I tell you, that man is an out and out fanatic. He'd fight just as hard to smash the Sierra as he, as he would to build it up. Well, I'll guarantee you I wasn't about to try to stop him out there. He had, had too many guns with him. Yeah. I don't know how many men he has backing him, but he's got enough. Well, most of the people in this town seem scared to death. You think we can count on any of them? I don't know, but we'll have to. Without that stage, Virginia City is no better than the ghost town. The Ponderosa is no better off. Well, how do you think we ought to go about it, Bob? Well, we talk to everybody in town, see who we can count on. No, it still isn't going to be many. Well, let's hope it's enough. Come on. There are a few honest citizens left in Latigo. And they've decided it's time for you and your boys to leave. Oh, now, Ben, there's no call for you and me to have any trouble. Fact is, I was just on my way to see you. I wanted to offer you and your boys a deal. No trouble and no deals. Just leave. Uh, with all those brave citizens standing behind you, I guess I'd be kind of foolish to make this a showdown, wouldn't I, Ben? Whose side are you going to be on when I come back?
If they come back, we'll be ready for them. Now, we'll get the supplies of mail ready for Virginia City. Until the Sierra sends out another man, my sons and I will ride shotgun in the wagons. Uh, Corklin, I'd appreciate it very much if you'd run the depot and... Well, Mr. Cartwright, do you think we're going about this in the right way? Mr. Corklin, if you like living in a... in a state of fear, we're going at it all wrong. But if you have any regard for yourself or your family, we have no choice. the supplies. Right. Hey, Corkley, give me a hand. No trouble at all. I sneaked right up to the barn. Everybody was so busy worrying about you coming back. They never did see me. What about the car line? Well, the way I figure, they mean business. Looks like they kind of took charge, you know, uh, take things over. All right. Then we'll give them some business. We'll wait until dusk. We'll circle back into town. They ought to still be in that barn working. We'll burn them out. When they come running, it ought to be like a turkey shoot for us. Jed! That's murder you're planning. You hold your tongue. All right, maybe you got a reason to fight the Sierra. But that's no reason to shoot down the Cartwrights in cold blood. I told you, you just shut up! <coughs> now that's 20, Pop. Good. There'll be a six-man guard on the next wagon that rolls out of here. Oh, say, I want you to pass the word around. Every man will be on duty from now on. Twelve hours on, twelve hours off. Now, starting tonight... Turn around. You Cartwright's outside. I'm escorting you out a lot ago. So Trask is sending a woman to do his work, huh? I'm trying to save your lives. Ben. Ben, please don't make me shoot. Now, Bella. Don't... Don't use that rifle, Ben. Now, put it down. burn you out. Ben, you got to try to understand. The Sierra was his life. When they fired him, it was as if... as if they tore out his heart. Well, thank you, Bill, for coming to warn us. It must have been a difficult thing for you to do. He, he never killed in cold blood. Only defending himself... A, or the Sierra. <laughs> Take her to the hotel, Paul. Yeah. Come on, Bill. <laughs> Guess we better get ready for Trask.
Sanchez. Them are hit. Somebody help. Rask, you and the others. Come on out with your hands high, or we'll burn you out. Rask, I'm going to count to ten. One, two. Only eight to go. I'm getting out of here. Shut up! Three! Four! Don't shoot! Don't shoot! I'm coming out! Five! Six! Wait a minute, this damn fight! Come on, get over there! Get over there! Get hold of her. Dad! Oh. You kill him! You kill him! He's alive. He's inside the barn. But not for long. Time's up. Let's burn him out. Look, I never had any intention of burning anybody out. You're not figuring on taking him alone. I'd like to talk to him. We're going in with you. Look, if we all go in, he'll start shooting. Somebody will get hurt. I think I can reason with him. Trask, I'd like to come in and talk to you. Well, come ahead, Ben. What's your proposition? I'm willing to listen. Careful, Pa. Talk to you. Jed? Jed? Sims, where'd you learn to spell? Huh? There's no A in freighters. <laughs> See here, Sims. I'm not about to pay these freight bills. Uh, what kind of bone you got to kick now? Uh, the Sierra's robbing us blind. These rates are sky high. I won't pay them. Well, don't blame me, Mr. Walker. I don't make the rates. They're standard for everybody. Now, go on inside and I'll show you. Oh, look, 
Bill Trask. Yeah, I sure like to see those potatoes. Yeah, they must be going way down in price to be using them for targets. Oh, I've had enough shooting to last me a lifetime, particularly with somebody by the name of Trask at the butt end of a gun. However, since she is a friend of ours, uh, why don't we stop off at the comp dog, have dinner, and see the show? Hey, good idea. Throw me that towel, Lee. Where's Pa? He left before daylight, did you hear him? I reckon he's still fronting about little Joe. Yeah, I know. He, uh, he was asking we were driving the horses in yesterday why Joe went to Yuma. You didn't tell him, did you? No sense in spilling the beans at this point. No. Yeah. Even so, I sure he'd see Pa so worried. You don't, you don't reckon anything could have happened to little Joe, do you? No, he can take care of himself. Don't worry. Just think how it's going to be when he rides into town and Pa sees what he's brought him. Yeah, I ain't thought of much else all week. Where did it happen? Two days south of here, sir. Cochise has got the whole Apache Nation stirred up. Burned our wagon. Give me a souvenir. Apache between here and Yuma. Uh, Reggie knows anything about little Joe? I don't know, but I'm going to ask him. Hey, you two men. Get him to the company doctor. Be careful. Lieutenant, I... I'd like to ask the scout. My youngest son is in Yuma, and he's two days overdue getting back. But he just told me there isn't a white man between here and Yuma that's left alive now. What you figuring on doing? I'm gonna try to get the army to send out a patrol to look for little Joe. You're planning on going with him? Yes, I am planning on going with him. Well, in that case, so are we. You two will stay right here and keep an eye on those horses we bought. It's quite enough that one of my sons wouldn't do as he was told. Paul, Adam and me been talking it over, and we think there's something you ought to know. I've raised a pack of stubborn, mule-headed, stump brain. Oh. I told him once, I told him ten times. Wait here at Tyson Wells, I said. Wait here, I said. But Paul. Oh, no, no, he's got to run off somewhere. Can't stay put. Does my word mean anything around Paul. here anymore? What? Paul, me and Adam want to tell you something if you'll calm down. I am calm. You're shouting. I'm not shouting. What is it you want to tell me? We want to tell you why Joe went to Yuma. Well, it's about time somebody started telling me something around here. Boy, it was a kind of a secret between Adam and me and Joe and... Now, will you two make sense? We're, we're trying to, Paul. Joe went to Yuma to buy a horse. A horse? Jumping Jehoshaphat. Haven't we bought enough Arizona horses in the last week to keep the Ponderosa overrun with horses for the next 10 years? Paul, this wasn't just any horse. It was, a, it was a gift for you. A gift? For your birthday. We, uh, we've been planning it since last year. We even rode every, every horse breeder from here to Kentucky. Yeah, you see, we, 
wanted it to be the greatest horse we could find. We wanted him to, wanted him to say something that we just couldn't say. What was it you couldn't say? Paul, we, I reckon we, we just didn't know how to say we loved you. They destroy everything always. Do you know these people? See. Si. A good man. His wife, two little girls. They had a good place here. We gotta find some water. How? The Apache are between us and Fort Dyke. The horses are so thirsty. And My young friend is thirsty, too. Here, have a drink, a big drink. Now, look, I had my share. Well, go ahead. We'll split it. You first. Thanks. I felt like a drown in all this water. Um, maybe we can ride around the Apache. There's no riding around him. Coaches and his men are everywhere. They will not stop until the army stops them. Probably get pretty thirsty waiting for that. Get even thirstier if we try to go back. Uh -huh. You're pretty sorry you left Colonel Green now, huh? No. Wherever the big white one is, that's where I belong. Yeah. That's all the water you got. Oh, that's all right. I had my share. It's better for him than me. You really think a lot of that horse, don't you? He is my life, amigo. We understand each other, this horse and me. Better to have a horse like this than to be born rich. Well, rich or poor will only last another day in the sun. See, si. But the horses won't. Amigo, I know where there's some water. How far is it? Very near. Very dangerous. Perhaps too dangerous. The Apaches, huh? No. Worse. Comancheros, bandits. These men do not fear the Apache. They trade with them. They have a camp in those mountains over there. Sound like real nice playmates. How do you happen to know where the camp is? because I was once one of them. You were a Comanchero? Some call it that. Some say I was a bandido. But whatever you call it, whenever they catch one, they put a rope around his neck, see? I was caught. It was Colonel Green who cut me down, gave me a job. I've not been back to that camp in the hills since. Well, what chance do you think we have with them? 
Does the kangaroo mouse have a chance with a rattlesnake? Well, well perhaps a little one. <laughs> um, our rattlesnake is a man called Sam Wolf. You know that name? Sure, I've heard the name Sam Wolf, but I, I thought it was a legend, not a real man. He is a king here. Cruel, cunning, deadly as a desert. Even Cochise fears him. I wish there was some other way. Well, there's one other way. What one is that, amigo? I'll ask the Apache for some water. <laughs> <laughs> well, we go this way to see the bandidos. The Indians are still raiding some isolated ranches and settlements. If they decide to raid Tyson Wells, I'll need every soldier I have here. I'm sorry, but my hands are tied. I appreciate your position, Lieutenant. Good luck. And as soon as I can, I'll put my troops at your disposal. Thank you, Lieutenant. You weren't figuring on leaving without us, were you? I thought I told you two to stay with the horses. You hear him tell us that? I don't recall hearing nothing like that. Looks like you're gonna have some company whether you want it or not. If all three of us ride out of here today, it's likely that none of us will ever get back. Our place is with you, no matter what happens. Oh, you, you can't ride out here without us. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Yes, sir, we understand. But we also understand that little Joe's in trouble. He might even be dead, I, I don't know. But I do know one thing. Whatever's happened to little Joe's happened to all of us. And we're still a family. Yeah. Yeah, we're still a family. Let's go. No, no. Don't act surprised. They've been watching us for half an hour. Pretend we're expected. Yeah, that's a little tough to do when somebody's shooting at you. We're safe for a while. They will not harm us, at least not until they take what they can get from us. Who? Have your rifle. Delante. White horse, Sam. Yeah, I see it. Sam, I gotta have that horse. Prettiest animal I ever saw in my whole life. I've seen it before. It's Colonel Green's horse. And if I'm not mistaken, that's Emiliano there with it. Emiliano. Put that thing away, boy. Emiliano was a good man. Might be again with a little persuading. Well, if it ain't my old friend Emiliano, como esta, amigo? This is my friend, Senor Joe Cartwright of Nevada. I'm Sam Wolf. This is my camp here. Not much of a camp, but <laughs> it's all we got. Actually, all we wanted was some water for ourselves and our horses. What makes you think you're going to get any? You stay out of this. So you want water, huh? That's right. Well, I got water. Only it's kind of hard to come by in this country, you know. If we got money, we're willing to pay for it. What do we want with your stinking money? Could kill you and take it. Just that simple. Remind this cop to whom he speaks, amigo. I never have liked him. He's off. 
And you take it easy. You know what I'd do to anybody who ever touched my little brother? If you want him to stay on touch, tell him to keep his mouth shut. <laughs> well, you sure ain't changed none, have Emiliano? I thought Colonel Green would have beaten the backbone right out of you by now. <laughs> Takes a great deal to change a man, senor. I am thirsty. My horses are thirsty. My friend is thirsty. Bring me some water. Well, you ain't gonna... Do just as I tell you. Sam Wolf never let a friend of his go thirsty in the desert. Only there's just one thing, Mr. Cartwright. This here camp's gone out of the way, you know. Mighty expensive bringing in supplies. Business ain't been too good lately. Yeah. How much you want? All you got. Well, now, this is mighty nice. Must be several hundred dollars in here. Only it ain't enough. Well, that's all we've got. Not all, friend. You've got something there that's better than money. I'll take that there white horse and... You can have all the water you can drink. Nobody touches that horse. <laughs> I'm sorry, you ain't got no choice. I got him, Sam, I got him! Get off my horse, kid. No, I seen him first. I said get away. He's my horse and don't you forget it. Oh, hold that. Oh. Ah. Ah. Oh, there. Oh, there, boy. Ah. Ah. Oh, there. Oh, there, boy. Oh. Oh. the street, but he's asleep. I have observed him. How tough it'll be to get the one outside the door? Well, it would be difficult. But our friends were very careless. <laughs> and I'm kind of glad you're on my side, Emiliano. No, it is I, you unfortunate Get up, Someone comes. Get back to bed. Does a wolf fear the rabbit so? <laughs> Emiliano, you're the only rabbit that I ever saw that could bite. <laughs> I accept a compliment, amigo. I meant it as one. How's your friend? He will leave. Not for long. Tomorrow we'll have a turkey shoot and he'll be our turkey. We will make excellent targets, amigo. I didn't mean you, Emiliano. I'm giving you a chance to live. You're a good man. I always liked you. I want you to come back and join up with us, Emiliano. I'll split with you, same as before. What of this one? <laughs> I'll give you the first shot. If you're a friend of his, be over with quick. And the white horse? Uh-uh. That one's mine. This horse means much to me, amigo. Much as your life. Perhaps. I'll give you until noon to think it over, Miliano. Adios. He's a nice fellow. <laughs> turkey shoot, huh? This is his favorite sport. They let a turkey run across the desert and shoot at him with rifles. Does a turkey ever get away? 
Mm. It has never been known to happen, amigo. I'll give you a run for your money. Me, muchacho? You got the first shot. <laughs> I did not say I would take it. Look, he offered you your life. What is that? Life without honor? You know, my father used to read me a, a passage from the Bible. When something like, it's better to be a living dog than a dead lion. You gotta think about it. Look at me, amigo. Look at me. Outside in the corral is a great horse. Tell me, have you ever seen such a horse? No, I haven't, but... And this horse... This horse speaks to me. Sings to me. You understand? Yeah, I understand. Now, do you... Do you think I will let a... A pig like this, a beast... Like this wolf have this horse? <laughs> no! I would rather die first. Look at me, amigo. I have always wanted a son my own, all my life. I am too ugly to even have a wife. Yeah. To think my horse will be a gift from a boy to his father. This moves me, amigo. Fear nothing, amigo. I fear for you like I would my own son. Let's see about getting out of here, then. Hey, compañero. Huh? What do you want, eat it up toads? Some of that which you drink, for a favor. Ugly one, who are you to ask a favor of me? Uh, I have money here in my hand. Let me see your money. First, the bottle. Come on, give me the bottle. Huh? <laughs> no. I know. I know, old brother of toads. You want to escape. You want to? Go ahead. Try it. <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> Get him out of sight. Right. Any trouble? No difficulty. The former owner will not be needing this. Yeah, where are the horses? This way. Pretty good, senor, eh? Yeah, well, I learned from an expert. I gotta find that horse. I'm not gonna leave here without him. I'm glad to hear you say that. Neither am I. Look, we'll split up and meet back here later. All right. Here you go. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Oh, o
Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We got plenty of trouble now, amigo. Creo que le pegué al caballo. Sí, así parece. You take the big white one. Right. Get my horse, Cayetano. See, si, Heffy. Take him in the house. Every man rides. count this and this yeah I count the same the horses are tired I think we should fire some shots have them scatter then we ride on right What do you make of that? Ah, it's an old trick. They have split up. It's a way around this mesa. If four of them ride fast, they can be waiting for us when we come out of the canyon. We just can't sit here and wait for Wolf and the others to catch up to us. You got a plan? Yeah, suppose we ride down through the canyon. Go as fast as we can to the other end and wait for them. The big white one, he can make it that fast. My horse, too slow, too tired. All right, you follow me. Get there as quick as you can. What are the others behind you? Well, I guess they'll be along. <laughs> That's what I like about you, amigo. You do not worry about tomorrow until tomorrow gets here. <laughs> Just hope it gets here. Pull them back with a couple of shots. Good general, amigo. They come to surprise you and you surprise them, huh? Eh? Yeah, still three of them out there. Oh. 
Not even the answer, little eh? Thanks. Poor Nada. His name was Raphael. I always planned to kill him someday anyway. Well, that leaves one more. Must be Cayetano. He was always a good friend to me. I will hate to have to kill him. Sometimes I just can't figure you out, Emiliano. Why? I am a simple man. I have my loves, my hates. Mostly I look out for my own hide. They will be coming from our back soon. Yoni, we're not gonna be here. Let's go. No, show. That Cayetano is the best shot of them all. Easy, easy, rest, amigo. Rest. We'll be riding out soon. Hey, you know, when we get back home, first call from that big white one's gonna be yours. Oh, no, amigo, that, that, that is too much. No, I insist. You cannot do that. This horse belongs to your father. He will not like it. No, he's not gonna mind. That's a promise, you're gonna get the first coal. Your father must be a very rare man, amigo. Yeah, I think so. I think you'll think so, too. When one is young, there is always hope, amigo. When one gets older and tired, he does what he must do. Well, let's get out of here. I'm sorry. You're a good man, amigo. I wish things could have been different. What's this all about? Get on the big white one, amigo, and ride. There's a chance. I'd rather let you have him than give him to Sam Wolf. What's the matter with you? You think I'd ride off and leave you? You have no choice. Sam Wolf did not offer you a job. A job? We killed his brother. You know you haven't got a chance back there. Yes, I do. I will become a bandido again. It is a good life, amigo. You take care of this horse, amigo, or I will come for you myself. The Ponderosa is not that far away. Emiliano... No, get out him! Or I'll kill you now! It'll make me stand big in the eyes of Sam Wolf. You take your choice, amigo. Take care of him. Right! Adios, white wolf. That's the most powerful horse I ever saw. Take at least three horses to run him down. You two got the fastest horses. Get off and give me the reins. Leave the canteens on. Might take me two or three days to run him down. Come on. Son. You are your father. And your brother. I should have known. You are a close family. 
You saw my son? See, see, he, he ride to the desert. They chase him. If you hurry. What, what are you trying to say? There was no other way. My horse was tired. But alone, and the big white one, there was a chance. You did this for little Joe? See, see, I'm the big white one. He is a fine horse, amigo. Your son, he tell me of the Ponderosa. The big horse, he will be happy there. Tell you, tell you, son. Yeah. I'll tell him. Paul, you'll never make it. They got us pinned down tight. It's about half tired of this. Yeah, it's not getting us any closer to little Joe, either. Yeah. Listen, Adam. Why don't you cover me and I'll come Now you're too big a target. One left. It's over there behind that rock. All right, I drive him out and you nail him, okay? Right. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay.
I'm sorry. Howdy, friend. I, uh... I just finished me off a horse thief. Caught him stealing my horses last night. You're a liar. Now, looky, friend. That kind of talk's gonna get you into a lot of trouble. Like I said, he's a horse thief. He's my son.
That's enough for now. Joe. Well, I, I try to get through. Never mind that now, son. I, I have to talk. There was a vaquero with me, Emiliano. I know. I, I talked with him. Well, then he's alive, then. No, I... He wanted you and the horse to get through. Emiliano. He was a good friend, Pa. I, he really loved that horse. It was such a beautiful horse, Pa. He ran his heart out for me. I know, son. We wanted, to, we wanted to give me that horse. I tried not to lose him. So we want to give him to you as a gift. I have my gift, son. Let's get him home. 